In today's video, let's look at turrets. So let's start really simple. You need two sprites to get a turret to work. You need the turret itself and a bullet. Now let's start with the turret because there's a couple of changes that we need to make in the editor to get this working. So I'm just going to right click and click edit. Now the main options come with the image points. The origin needs to be where the main rotation is going to happen on the turret. So if you've got a turret with a round barrel, it's going to rotate around that barrel. In my case, it's going to rotate around this center point. So I need to make sure my origin point is there. Secondly, we need to add in a second image point, and this is where the bullet's going to fire. Now, in my case, I've got twin turrets, so I need two image points. I'm going to place the first one on this turret here, and then I'm going to create a second image point and place it just here. This just means when you fire, the bullet's going to come out the right place and it's going to go out the middle of the object, which is going to look a little bit weird. So that's done. We can hit the X button. As for our bullet, we don't need to do anything in the editor, but we do need to resize it. So what I'm going to do is place it next to my turret. And I want to size it to a size that makes sense for the barrel it's coming out of. So just about there. These two objects I like to place quite far off screen so they don't interact with the game at all. But it means that if we spawn others in, they're all going to follow the same rules of the first two that created, being these two here. Next we can move on to our behaviours. And our behaviours are really, really simple. For the turret, we're going to right click, add a behavior, and we're going to use the well-named turret behavior. Now, when we add the turret behavior, there's some options that we can change. So first of all, the range of the turret. How close does the player need to be before it's going to start shooting at the player? Rate of fire, this is in seconds. How often does it shoot? With a lower number, such as 0.5, it's going to fire every half a second. Can it rotate? So if it can turn and face towards the player, or does it just stay stationary and just shoot stationary? Rotate speed, how quickly can it turn around? The slower this is, the slower it's going to be to turn around to face its enemy, so if you've got a really fast player or fast enemy, your turret might not hit a lot. Target mode, if you've got lots of targets set up, and I'll show you how to select a target for your turret. How does it fire? Does it shoot at the first in range? Or does it shoot at the nearest? And then we get to predictive aim, which is probably one of the coolest options on there. Now I'll show you an example of predictive aim a little bit later, but instead of aiming where the player currently is or where the enemy currently is, it tries to calculate where it's going to be. Realistically, if you put this on, it is a very broken mechanic. So the only time you want this put on is if you're shooting against an enemy, say in a tower defense game, but if you're putting this on an enemy shoots at a player, it's gonna feel unfair. So it's one to really have off. We can then move to our bullet and we just need one behavior for this one. And you've probably guessed it already, we're gonna add the bullet behavior. For the bullet behavior, there's a couple of options we can change on this one as well. We can change the speed of the bullet, so how fast is it? Does it gain any acceleration? And you can do the opposite, you can make it so it slows down over time. Does it have any gravity? So if you're making a platform game and you want a platform turret, you can make it so the bullets fall over a certain time. Does it bounce off solid? And then these options here are just for setting angle and then step is just if you've got a really fast bullet. It will just do more calculations to make sure that bullet doesn't go through any solid collision. So now we've got those objects, I've set up a really, really quick demo where I've got an X-Wing. All I've done for this X-Wing is I've gave it the car behavior so I'm able to fly it around the screen. And then I've got all these turrets that have got the turret behavior already as we've just added. And that's about it. Now what we want to do is actually program this and the event sheet is really easy for this part. So I'm going to start, and the first thing we want to do is add a new event, system, and scroll down to on start of layout. We're going to add an action, we're going to go to our turret, and we're going to go down to the turret options. And in the turret options, we've got add objects to targets. This allows us to choose who we are targeting. So in my case, we're going to target the player. If you're making a tower defense, like my balloon tower defense tutorial, I target balloons. So we can choose X-Wing and hit done. We can add more than one target. So you can add additional targets. If you've got multiple players and multiple enemies you want to shoot at, that can be easily changed. But for now, we've just got the one target. On the other side, what we need to do is go to the turret. And there is a fantastic option called on shoot. And this is a fantastic option because what it does is it checks, is the turret ready to shoot? 
Has it got a target? If so, trigger this function. So let's say that the time has run out. It can now shoot what we want to do. Well, we're going to go back to our turret for one final time, scroll down, and spawn another object. Now we want to spawn a bullet, and we want to do it from image point one, which is where we said the bullet's going to fire from on our turret. Now, because I've got two barrels on my turret, I'm actually going to copy and paste this. And I'm just going to change image point one to image point two on this second one, so I'm able to shoot from both turrets. And that's it done. Now, obviously, we need to make it so it can actually destroy our player as well. So we can just add a new event to say, if green bullet is overlapping another object, being our player, then we can choose what to do with that. And make sure when you do this, if you're doing it where the player doesn't die instantly, you just add a system requirement. So this only triggers once. Because if not, what's going to happen is one bullet will actually tear through all your life. So we want to only trigger once. And then in terms of actions, there's lots of stuff you can do. If you're starting out and you just want something really, really quick to test, what I recommend is just restart layout under the system actions. This will just restart the level again so you can try again. I'm going to go for something a little bit more complicated, but it's not going to be fully fleshed out. And all I'm going to do is set the color to be 255, meaning the ship flashes red. And then go to system. I'm going to add in a small weight of one second. And then go back to my X-Wing. I'm just going to set the color back. And the way that we set the color back is we just set all these values to 100. And it puts it back to its original color. That way we get a little bit of flash. Say we've taken damage. But the game doesn't restart. Which is great for this video. Because I'm probably going to get shot a lot. So now if we do a test. The moment I get near these turrets. They're going to start rotating. And they're going to start shooting at me. And it'll be up to my X-Wing to try and navigate away from them and try and survive. But you can see that this can get quite chaotic very, very quickly. So it turns into quite a difficult game trying to avoid these bullets. Now, as always, there'll be a copy of the code below. Also a link to a bit of a project that I put together using this turret code. So these turrets are going to be on the side of this trench run. And if you leave the trench for any reason and sit on the sides to avoid the TIE Fighters, you'll get shot by the turrets. It's all this risk reward. So if you want to try it yourself again, it'll be in the arcade and see if you can get to the end. For now, hope you've enjoyed this video. Like if you have, subscribe to the channel if you're not, and I'll see you in the next video.